So this is FRQ number eight. This is an equilibrium question. It's generic. Uh, it's more of the KP, KC, you know, KEQ, not an acid base, not a KSP. Uh, so if you're looking for the fundamentals of equilibrium, this is kind of what we're looking for. If you want to take time right now and look at the problem, it'll be in the description. Um, so if you click on the description, you can link to this problem. You can also go find other ones. So if you want a different topic, uh, those are all there if you want to do more later. Uh, in this particular one, we're looking at this reaction. We have hydrogen and chlorine gas combined to make hydrochloric acid. So two gas molecules becoming two gas molecules. And it's just going through some basic equilibrium things. So in the beginning it says, what's the equilibrium expression for this reaction? Which used to be, and hopefully still is, the very first question of your AP exam on the FRQs. So equilibrium expression, I just want to write out my products over reactants. So I have my hydrochloric acid as the product. The coefficient of two is going to give me an exponent of squared. And then I'm going to have hydrogen gas and chlorine gas. Uh, when I'm writing these, I could have written a KP expression as well. I would not have put the brackets on. The brackets imply molarity. Uh, so you want to put brackets anytime that you're not doing that particular of uh, KP. Uh, from there, we're going to go in and do some ice charts. And we're going to do a little bit of equilibrium analysis. And there's going to be a little bit of math on this. Uh, and I'm going to try and glaze over a little bit for you because we have a little bit of problem in part C. But part B works out quite well. So part B says that we have uh, two moles of each gas injected into a one liter container. And it gives us the K value. It says that the K value is equal to 474 at specific temperature. Okay, so equilibrium constants will change as the temperature changes, as our rates change disproportionately. Uh, but for now, I want to do an ice chart. So for an ice chart, you want to write out the reaction, and then you want to write the word ice like this. And the I stands for initial, it's basically what are you starting with? So you're starting not at equilibrium. So I'm starting with 2 molar H2 two molar Cl2, and I'm starting with no product. So if they don't mention the product, it's fair enough to assume that you start with zero up. So currently, I'm not at equilibrium. I don't have any product, so I don't have any reverse reaction rate. And so, so in order to get equal rates, I'm going to need to increase my amount of product and decrease my amount of reactants. I don't know what those will change by, but I do know that they will change in proportionality to each other. So the change step here is limited by your stoichiometry. So whatever hydrogen decreases by, which I don't know, I'm going to call it X. But I know that whatever that goes down by, the chlorine will go down by the same amount. Because they're a one-to-one -one mole ratio, that if I lose you know, a molarity or, or 1.4 molarity of H2, that I'm also going to lose the same amount of chlorine. And my HCl, on the other hand, is going to go up by double that amount. So every time I lose one of these and lose one of these, I gain two of those. And so that proportionality is, is, is in that second step of change, the stoichiometry. If my reaction went to completion, I would just do a strike problem. I would use up two of those, two of those, and gain four of those. Okay? Uh, but in the sense of equilibrium, I'm probably not going to do a completion. I'm probably going to get partially complete. And I want to know what that amount is. So at equilibrium, then, I can combine those two amounts. I started with two, and I lost x. I started with two, and I lost x. I started with zero, and I gained two x. And then what I can do with those is I can plug those into an expression up here. At equilibrium, I have 2 minus x of this, 2 minus x of that, and 2x of that. And I know that the product and in, in division of all of those is equal to 474. So what I end up with is 474 is equal to HCl quantity squared. So 2x squared. And then I have 2 minus x times another 2 minus x, so squared. Now, at that point, because I know the equilibrium constant, I can solve for x. So this one is actually quite simple. What I would want to do is I would want to square root the entire thing. So I'm going to square root this side, and I'm going to square root that side. And that keeps my proportionality the same, or my, my equation the same. Uh, but, it, but it changes into something that's very easy to solve for. Okay, So the square root of 474 is 21.77. And that would then be equal to 2x over 2 minus x. So then I would multiply by the 2 minus x, and I would end up with 43.54 minus 21.77x equals 2x. I'm going to move the 21.77x over here, and then I'm going to solve for x. So I'm just going to kind of cut to the chase here. Uh, my x value that I end up solving for is 1.8. 
Now, of course, we don't need them in decimal places, but I put them in for the moment so that we can kind of double check my answer to make sure this works. What I then would do is I would plug those concentrations into 2x, 2 minus x, and 2 minus x, and say, okay, well, what are my values? Uh, if I plug that 0.183 into here, I'm getting 2 minus 1.83, I'm getting 0.17, approximately. Okay? So at equilibrium, I'll have 2 minus that amount, I'll have about 0.17 of this, about 0.17 of that, and then I'm going to have double that amount here. I'm going to have 1.8 times 2, and that's going to come out to about 3.7. If I then take those and plug those back into my expression, 3.7 squared over 0.7 over 0.7, I should get a number close to this. And I do. So then if I go back to my question, the question says, how many moles of HCl will be present after equilibrium is achieved? So I have 3.7 molar in 1 liter. So my answer to part B is 3.7 moles of HCl. Okay. I think the final answer I had was 3.66. Now, in that particular one, that's an easy math question in the past. Um, the next one is, is was a bad question, we'll say. So in the next part, in part C, uh, then starts off with good intentions, but the math quickly kind of spirals out of control. So part C, it says, now you're going to mix together some things. Are you at equilibrium? Okay. Um, and what do you have to do to achieve equilibrium? So in part C1, it says determine which direction the reaction will shift. What that's saying is you need to calculate Q. Q is the same thing as K. It's just when your reaction is not necessarily at equilibrium. That's funny. All right. Of course, that's the inverse of Q. Let's try that one more time. So products on top and reactants on the bottom. So I'm going to plug in my values, and then I'm going to compare that to my K value of 474 that I had from earlier. So in this one, it gives me that the HCl is 12.2 squared. And I'm dividing that by my H2 and Cl2, which is 7.4 and 0.84. And when I do that, I'm going to get a certain value, and for this one, I get 23.9. Now, what do I do with that? Okay, well, 23.9 is smaller than my K value, which means this, that in order to be at equilibrium, in order to get the two rates to be equal that are opposing, I need more product to increase my reverse reaction rate compared to my forward reaction rate, and I need less reactant to do the, to do the opposite. So I need this amount to become larger, and this amount to become smaller. Okay, so in order to get that to happen, I'm going to shift to the right, make more product and use up some of my reactant. Okay. Now, what I then want to do is I want to apply that for an ice chart. So in part two, I'm doing my ice chart again. But this time I can plug in my initials here. Okay, so I have 7.4, 0.84, and 122 but now I'm going to shift, and now I'm shifting to the right, so I'm increasing my amount of product. So I'm still going to go with a plus 2x, a minus x, and a minus x. Now, this sets up a math problem that really I didn't want to solve. Uh, so I kind of cheated a little bit and used the calculator. And just kind of iterated until I got a reasonable answer. Um, when I ended up solving for x, I ended up with 0.78 is working decently well. It's actually a little bit smaller than that to get it to be perfect. Um, so I went with 0.78 as my final x value. Uh, in part two, so anyway, the math on this is not really worth our time. It's probably not a very good question in that sense. But if you solve for it, you should get something close to that, just under that 0 0.779, 0 0.77 something. Um, so when we look at that then, basically, this amount is going close to zero. This amount's going down a little bit and this amount's going up a little bit, and then I'll be at equilibrium, I'll have those equal rates. Uh, the question asks, what's my equilibrium concentration of HCl? So in that sense, 0.78 times 2 plus 12.2, and that comes out to be 13.76 molar. It's my HCl concentration. So that's my answer to part 2. 
And then part three says that after equilibrium is achieved, we add some extra HCl into the container. Why will this cause a shift in the concentration of hydrogen gas in terms of reaction rates? So equilibrium, I think, is very simple to quickly become lost in the math. And then as you start to learn it, you really lose sight of what the premise of it is. And that's, that's a shame because, because the name itself is very misleading uh, in the sense that equilibrium it has the word equal in it. And we spend so much time looking at concentrations because you can't see a reaction rate. Okay? Um, you can see evidence of it through the concentration. And so we can kind of link the two together and say, okay, well, well maybe, maybe equal means equal concentrations, and it doesn't. So what it means is, is that the, the reaction is progressing in a way where you're turning the HCl into the chlorine and hydrogen at the same rate that the hydrogen and chlorine are turning back into the HCl. And so what then happens is you inject more chemical is you're no longer at equilibrium. You're going to see a spike. Okay. So for part three, when we inject that extra HCl, what's going to happen is I'm going to go from having a forward rate and a reverse rate that are equal to all of a sudden my reverse rate is going to become larger. And my forward rate is still the same at this point because my concentrations of those two chemicals hasn't changed yet. But as my reverse direction increases due to more collisions and more effective collisions happening, then I'm going to start to form more and more reactants. And that's going to start to speed this up. And then as this gets used up, it's going to slow down. So what I'm going to end up with is I'm going to end up with a faster rate for this and a faster rate than this than when I started as those two even out. Okay. So in order for that to happen, I'm building up more reactant and using up some of that extra product, some of the other product that I had originally, uh, until I have less after my injection. Okay. And, so, and so the rates are something that we can study by looking at the concentration, but really it's the rate that's the, that's the highlighted feature of equilibrium. The equal in equilibrium refers to equal rates. Okay, so that's FRQ number eight. If you have any questions, please post. And of course, uh, you're welcome to check out any of the other ones. I have a bunch of FRQs on all AP Chem topics. And you can link to them in the description.